head over to BoardGamePrices.com to see the best price on filler and thousands of other games. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Get that sort of baker's chef hat on and get that tube ready and start putting some nice cream and things into all sorts of different pastries. We're gonna be making different pastries here in Filler, the filler game. This is from Green Couch Games. Uh, let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In filler, each of you are going to be one of these different bakers, and I love the inclusiveness of the art in this game. They're also sort of just colors as well. They each have a starting hand, which are all somewhat balanced, but they're a little bit different. Now, the object of the game is to have the most points, and you'll do that by collecting cards. There's a row of cards, different amount of cards, depending on the amount of players. Here we're playing with four players. And each icon on the left at the bottom of these cards are basically going to be one point. So at the end of the game, all the cards that you've collected are going to have a certain amount of points, and you're trying to get the most of those. So now looking at my three cards, now these are usually kept secret, but I'm showing you there here on the video just to see how it works. Now look at this, this card has the most points of all the ones out there, it's three points. However, it has a very late time, and this is important because each round there's two phases. The first phase is every player is gonna select a card from their hand, and they essentially are going to play it face down. Once everyone has their cards face down, everyone's gonna flip it up and they're going to see what the time is. And you're gonna go in turn order from lowest time to highest time. So we look at this first round here, and this one has the most points, and it requires an egg and any two resources. Well, here I have an egg, and this one is two resources, this one is one. So in order to spend cards to get this, if this was available on my turn, I would need to use both of these cards because, you know, and then I have some leftover goods that aren't really doing a whole lot for me, which means at the beginning of the game, this is the only other card I would have to use for time, and 749 is kind of late. So it's not likely that using this card for time that I'm probably gonna be the first one to be able to get this. And that's a lot of the decisions that you make in this game. It all has to do with timing and resources and what you're trying to get. So let's say in this round, all four players have played their card face down and they flip them up and we look for time. So I flipped them over and I've actually placed them left to right in time order. So now when you use your time card, it goes into a discard pile in front of you. And if you're playing with a lot of players like this, you can give each player sort of a turn order card so that they know when to go. So again, these would go in discard, these would be in front of them, but I'm gonna leave them here just to make this look a little easier for you. So this player's gonna go first and they're gonna go for this one that has great points. Now they're gonna use the other two cards that they started with, the egg and any two resources like this. So they're gonna spend these cards. The cards they spent, of course, and as I mentioned before, their time card goes to their discard pile and this will go in their hand, which means they can use it starting on that next turn. But right now they're only gonna have one card left for next round, we'll show you what happens with that. So Jay is next and he's gonna use these two cards. It's gonna be chocolate, the vanilla and the egg, and they're gonna get this. So these will go in his discard pile. This will already have been in his discard pile. And he's going to take this. Now this has a special ability on it. This says it allows you to take all the cards from your discard pile and put them right in your hand immediately. Now, whenever you get a card, this always goes in your hand, but now the cards that, that he had just spent now go in his hand. So that was a great sort of move. Now it didn't give, just gave him one point there, but also gave him uh, that little bonus ability, which is cool. Now Lance is next. He's just going to spend one card for this chocolate and blueberry. So these are going to go to his discard pile and he'll put this in his hand. So he's actually going to have two cards in his hand to start next turn. The one he just got and one of the three starting cards that he didn't use. And last but not least, Angela is going to go and she's going to get this one. This one has vanilla, strawberry, egg, vanilla, strawberry, egg between these two cards. So again, her time card and her other cards go to the discard pile, she is going to get this. Now this card will stay here and you'll refill this up to the amount of players plus one like usual. So in this new round, let's just assume Jay was going first after everyone has done the time cards. Let's say he wants to get this one. All he needs is a blueberry, so he'll discard this one to his discard pile because he has blueberry there. And he'd take this. Now this is an icon. It's like a sort of a bag of cream. This is going to allow you to fill immediately. So you get to pull this card into your hand. Now if this card happened to have some ingredients, you could actually use those to fill. So you're going to get to fill something else if you'd like. And I'm going to play this card to fill this. So again, this is going to go to the discard pile, but this is going to go into Jay's hand. Now, if you remember last round, Eddie, the green player, only had one card left. So when they got to this point, and it, let's say it was their point now and they got to choose, they would not have any cards to be able to fulfill anything. So what they can do is restock. Now, you can do it when you can fill things if you have more cards, 
Uh, so for your turn, you're either filling and getting a card or you're restocking. When you restock, you're gonna take any one of these cards if you're choosing, like, ooh, this is a wild good. I don't want anybody else to get this. You get to take one of these cards, place it back on top, knowing it's gonna come out next round, and then you take all the cards from your discard pile, put them back in your hand so you have a full hand. And this just still continues just as I showed you, and you'll continue this until the deck completely runs out. There's a different amount of cards in here depending on the amount of players. Once the game's over, everyone's gonna lay out all the cards that have points in front of them. Now, each of these symbols is considered one point. So we have three points for the stars, one, two, three, four, five, because there's two monies there, for money, and one, two, three, four, five for the trophies. So alone, that's 13 points, but you get two extra points for every set of the three that you have. And we have at least three stars, three money, and three trophies. That's gonna be three sets times two points for each is six more, so a total of 19 points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. There's also an advanced variant. There's 10 of these cards that have a red border. These cards are different because they have two different new abilities. One of them is the trash can, which when you take this card, you remove one of your cards from the game. And then this one is a minus one hour. When you have this in your hand, you can place this along with one of your other cards that you may have when you're doing time. So if I played these two together when we were secretly revealing the time, it would be 749 minus one hour, it'd be 649. Now there's also a solo game and each of the six chefs in the game on the back of their player aid has sort of an AI and they all sort of play a little bit differently. For example, Eddie, and I like how it has sort of thematic reasoning as to why his abilities exist. Almost always he has ingredients on hand and ready, but some critics find him a bit predictable. Now his special rule is when he fills a recipe, it goes on the bottom of his deck instead of to his discard pile. And then choosing cards, if he's earlier than you at the time, he chooses the card with the most points. And if it's tied, it, if there's multiple of those cards, uh, the one with the lowest time. But if you beat him at the time, you, then you get to decide which one that he chooses. So when you're playing against him, you're really trying to focus on getting lower times and beating him with the time and things like that. But each of these has a different way of playing. You can pause it here and see all these abilities. All right, filler. I love the theme. I always like food themes in games. Uh, and this is a cool theme and a great name to go along with it. Filler as they're filling those different pastries. The filler game, I love that. Uh, the game has beautiful art, great graphic design. It's very clean. It's easy to, to, to sort of see all the icons, how things work. So good job making it look great in the presentation. The game has simple rules, but it does have some tough decisions. You know, you're simply just playing a card, trying to jockey for position how early you get up. Then you're either gonna take a card or you're going to bring your cards back. I mean, it's pretty easy, but there's a lot of things sort of to think about. I like that, you know, you're, you're trying to go early for the time, or you have wilds, or you have points. And those are the different things you're looking at when you're trying to figure out which card to go for. Ooh, do I want this one to allow me to go early and get something I really need later? Or this wild is so flexible, or this one actually gives me points, maybe two different types of the set collection, so that's kind of cool. Speaking of that set collection, I think that's, it's, I like set collection, collection all the time. And this one, where you're doing, you know, the trophies and the money and things like that, I really like that, that you're, you're trying to, you know, collect all those, all those different things. Uh, and I also like that when you're, as you're playing the game, you're kind of watching which ones are coming out because uh, in most player accounts, cards are being removed from the game before you play. You're trying to sense which ones are less available and trying really hard to get those. I like that adds a you know, little bit more depth to the game as well. Uh, I like using the early, uh, the early time cards at the right time. You know, you've got to find the right time to use that. You're watching what other players are taking after a while. You get to know if you have the lowest card in the game or not and can you play it. And if so, and it's in your... Your, your discard pile, hmm, do I really want this other card? Or do I wanna just pick up my card so that when I get a card I really want, I'll be able to try to get it fast, be the first one to get there. So the whole timing aspect of this game is very interesting. Uh, I like the bonus abilities. Hey, this card might not have a whole lot of points on it, but it's gonna allow me to fill a second card or allow me to pick up my cards for free. That's a cool little thing there. I like the advanced card too. It adds new abilities, gives the game a little bit more depth. Uh, a little more tougher decisions. Uh, I tried the solo mode out. It works well where all the different chefs have a different AI sort of personality uh, and it's fun. It works. It's a really good solo experience and I like how you can play against the different chefs and each time you have to play a little bit differently. Really like that. Uh, uh, on the negative side, mm, there's not a lot negative I can say here. The game is fantastic. Uh, but there can be some downtime with higher player counts, like five or six, you know, due to 
players taking your desired card and then you having to sort of reassess everything. Oh, right, they took the one I was gonna take. Do I have enough to get this over here? Hmm, let me see, I can match with this. Do I wanna do this or do I wanna do this? You kind of have to rethink your turn a little bit as people take the things that you want, which often happens. And it's not that bad with lower player counts, but with higher player counts, eh, sometimes it can slow the game down a little bit if everybody on the back end of the turn set has to sort of rethink their turn, but it's not a big deal. It didn't slow it down to the point where I wouldn't play it with that, but I just prefer it with four or less. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. Uh, and it's such a streamlined game and it's such a small box. I'm gonna be keeping it in my gaming library. So let's induct it properly for the saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was shot on a Game Topper, the ultimate gaming accessory. After successfully fulfilling their first Kickstarter, Game Toppers are taking the world by storm. Now you can get your own portable gaming top by participating in Game Toppers Kickstarter 2.0 starting June 25th, 2019. New styles, new sizes, and amazing new game mats. Go to GameToppersLLC.com to enter a full Game Topper system valued over $1,000 to also bring you to the Kickstarter project page and to late pledge.